I was drafted because I uh, turned 18 uh, when the draft law was, uh, I was still in high school, and the draft uh, was lowered to 18 in December of 1942, and I didn't graduate until May of 1943. And uh, I had pre-qualified for this Army Specialized Training Program, and uh, they did have something in the back of their mind, I guess, when they, before they sent me up to the University of Wisconsin. I uh, was down to... Uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, at the infantry school, which is probably one of the finest infantry training uh, facilities in the United States. So uh, they said, we, we want you to be a soldier first, and you'll be a, a student a second. So uh, basically, then uh, all of a sudden, then I turned from a student back into a, a soldier. And uh, it probably uh, uh, didn't affect my uh, uh, assignment. What was the question? Uh, whether you're drafted or whether you're enlisted. And did that affect your your participation? Oh, I had taken four years of ROTC at Indiana University. So a month before I graduated, <coughs> I received a letter from the War Department and said, upon being commissioned, you'll report to Fort Custer, Michigan on July 7th, 1941. Uh, I was drafted in 1943, and uh, they put me in school in uh, Chicago to uh, pre-radar school, where we were taught uh, some of the uh, uh, things of elect electricity and radios and a little bit of code. And uh, the, they finally closed the school down in Chicago because they had... Uh, more than enough uh, radar uh, technicians. And uh, uh, I think he was a, a captain came to our uh, uh, classroom one day and said, uh, uh, if uh, any of you would like to go overseas, uh, we can guarantee you'll be overseas within uh, uh, six months. And uh, you'd have to volunteer to do this. And you would be doing this in uh, what they call the OSS. And they said the OSS was overseas service. And uh, you would become a radio operator and you'd work for the OSS. And I, uh, I volunteered. You know, you never volunteer, but I volunteered for overseas service. And uh, uh, within six months, uh, that uh, came to be. I was a radio operator, a high-speed radio operator. Uh, in those days, a radio operator took code. Uh, you know, da 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 da. You hear the. Uh, uh, you occasionally hear it even on the radio today. The CW uh, code. And uh, this is what we were trained in, and this is the type of uh, work we did with the OSS. I enlisted. <clears throat> I always loved to fly. When I was 15, I had my first pilot's license. They, were, they sent us to Fort Sheridan. Or no, we first went to Battle Creek. Then we went to Big Spring, Texas. They weren't ready for us. They sent us right to school. I never had one day of basic training. When we left California, we were sent to Kelly Field, Texas, the big flight school there. And from there, we were sent to Australia. When we got into San Francisco that day, all these battleships, a couple carriers, it was the biggest bunch of ships you could ever imagine. And we thought, boy, this is going to be exciting going to Australia. They put us on a little ship, the Maui, 125 specialists, Air Force people, and a solid load of caskets. 39 days later, we landed in, in Brisbane, Australia. We stayed there two days. They put us on a little boat or a little train, which were different gauges in Australia. And every morning at 10 o'clock, wherever you were in the outback, they drew hot water off the engine and fed everybody tea. A lot of it was a little bit tainted from the rust in the engines. And I tell you, it was a wonderful experience, and I'm so blessed that we got to do what we did, and we're blessed to be able to get home. <laughs>